again. We have a great story of peace for you today. It's about a man named Isaac, and it comes from the book of Genesis, which is near the very beginning of the Bible. Let's watch today's real and true Bible story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 26. God had chosen Abraham to follow him, and God made the same promises to Abraham's son, Isaac. I will make your children after you, as many as the stars in the sky, and I will give them all these lands. All nations on earth will be blessed because of your children. Thank you, God. The land of the Philistines where Isaac lived had experienced a period of famine, but God blessed Isaac's crops. Hey, boss, we done gathered 100 times more wheat than we planted. Excellent. 103.7 times as much to be precise. And your flocks and herds are multiplying like rabbits. Actually, they're increasing like sheep and goats, because that's what they are. Very well, carry on. Unfortunately, the Philistines who lived nearby grew jealous of Isaac's success. They shoveled dirt into his wells, cutting off his water source. Excuse me? The king of the Philistines called for Isaac and issued a command. You have become too powerful. Move away from us. It wasn't fair. Isaac had plenty of men who could stand against the Philistines and fight, but he chose to keep his coup. All right, we'll move down to the Valley of Gerar. Isaac and his family packed up everything he owned. I knew I should have been saving all those Camel X delivery boxes. They moved on and made camp in the Valley of Gerar, where Abraham had lived many years before. Oh, all right, men. Let's open up those old wells my father dug. <sighs> Isaac's servants immediately got to work digging for water. Wee! It's hotter than a snake in a hog's back out here. My calculations of soil composition. We should hit water in precisely 2.6 seconds. Well, ain't that the bee's knees? Abraham's old wells filled with cool, clear water once again. The happy herds and flocks could drink their fill. <laughs> uh, that is, until the nearby Philistine herdsmen showed up. So kind of you to open up these wells for us. Step beside the water's ours. Isaac's servants gaped at the Philistines. You got some knife. These wells belong to Isaac by ancestral tradition and dint of hard labor. Whatever. We're taking the well. Oh yeah? We well, gonna have to fight me for it. I believe the appropriate course of action is to flee. As Isaac's servants and the Philistine herdsmen faced off, Isaac himself arrived. Easy does it, fellas. There's plenty of land in this valley for everyone. We'll move along. But, uh, but, but we can take them. Let's go. So Isaac and his family and his servants and his flocks all moved camp down the valley. And once again, his servants set out to dig new wells. This is an exercise in futility. Yeah, well, I've been working out. My futility is really strong. Oh, <laughs> look here! The new wells also produced clean, clear, cool water, but it wasn't long before Philistine herdsmen arrived on the scene. Yes! Another day, another well for us. Why, you, you, I'll flatten you back to the flood. Step aside. Eek, save me. Once again, Isaac showed up. Take it down a notch, please. There's still room for everyone. Oh, come on. We could knock them flat. Yes, we could, but we're not going to. Move on out, boys. For a third time, Isaac and his men moved camp, and once again, his servants dug new wells. This time, I'm going to tie those bullies in knots and dip them in garlic. Oh, look. Water. Yay. Wait for it. Wait for it. Hmm. This time, no one challenged Isaac or his servants. 
they were left to tend to their flocks and herds in peace. That is until one day, Isaac spotted King Abimelech heading his way with a host of advisors. When the royal entourage arrived, Isaac welcomed them. Why have you come to me? You were angry with me and sent me away. Abimelech shifted and exchanged a glance with his advisors. Well, we saw clearly the Lord was with you, so we want to make a peace treaty with you. We always treated you well. We sent you away peacefully, and uh, now the Lord has blessed you. <laughs> Give us your word you won't harm us. I can do that. Isaac prepared a feast for the Philistines. Early the next morning, the men made an agreement to keep peace with each other. Then the Philistines went on their way. Need a drink? Pretty good well right there by the road. Yep, even though Isaac had the power to win a fight, he had chosen to stay strong and walk away three times in a row. And God had blessed him with peace. Isaac had chosen to stay strong and walk away from a fight three times in a row. He had made the wise choice even though it must have been difficult and God blessed him with peace. We can learn a lot from Isaac's story. Let's remember this. You can show you care about others by walking away from a fight. Let's pray and ask God to help us do that. Do you remember what praying is? It's talking to God. Here we go. Dear God, thank you so much for giving Isaac the strength to make peace. It probably wasn't easy for him to walk away when the Philistines were causing trouble. Please help us choose peace like he did. Help us know when it's wise to stand up and when it's wise to walk away. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's important for us to make peace with the people around us. Isaac certainly thought that was true. I mean, think about it. It wasn't fair that the Philistines were so mean to Isaac. It would have been really easy for him to be mean back. But instead, Isaac walked away. He chose to make peace. And because of that, the Philistines trusted him enough to make a peace treaty so they wouldn't have any more disagreements in the future. Remember, you can show you care about others by walking away from a fight. If you're frustrated or mad or you're not sure you can walk away, Stop and think for a minute. Think about Jesus. Remember what he did for us. Jesus died on the cross because he knew it was part of God's plan. He knew it was the only way to make peace with us once and for all. Now don't forget, sometimes it is important to stand up for yourself. Peace doesn't mean that you always have to give up what's right. If you're in a tough situation and you aren't sure what to do, you can always talk to your mom or dad, your teacher or another adult who can help because there are situations where you need to stand up for yourself. So talk to someone that cares about you. And finally, here's our verse for this week that helps us remember to live in peace. It's from Romans. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, 19. It was so great to be with you here today. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time, which will be our last time this school year. Sounds great. Bye friends.